This video is going to use an economic model to go over the relationship between Emma Woodhouse and Miss Bates from Jane Austen's Emma. And the video will go over a bunch of different vocabulary, which you can see on this screen. Now, the first question we want to ask ourselves to understand these models are, what are the two characters' choice variables? And we see that Miss Bates has two choice variables. One of her, of her choice variables is the speed of her talking. So she can talk really, really fast, so it's impossible for other people to get a word in edgewise. Or she can talk more slowly, such that other people can interrupt and have a part in the conversation as well. And Miss Bates is going to have to choose how fast does she talk at people when they come to visit her. Her other choice variable is going to be her financial contribution to the picnic, and this is in reference to the picnic at Box Hill in the book Emma. So those are her two choice variables, though the two things she has to decide. Um, for Emma, Emma is going to be choosing two things as well, and of course Emma is also going to be choosing um, Emma's financial contribution to the picnic, similar to Miss Bates choosing Miss Bates' financial contribution to the picnic. But Emma's other choice variable is how often to visit Miss Bates. And of course, Emma is this rich woman in this town. She's 21 years old. Miss Bates is in her 40s, and Miss Bates never got married. Miss Bates used to be rich, but now she is kind of um, middle class, and there's a lot of pity to be had on her because of that. And therefore, um, the hero of, the, of Emma's world, Mr. Knightley, believes that Emma should go to visit Miss Bates more often. And we'll see how that plays out in the model. So those are the choice variables. Those are the decisions that these characters are going to make. The second thing we want to think about is the objective function. And the objective function is simply, what is it that each character is trying to maximize? What is their objective? And this really just captures what do these people care about? So let's look at Miss Bates' objective function. She has a coefficient of 100 on her talking, and her talking has um, an exponent of 0 0.7, which basically says there's diminishing marginal utility over talking. Um, anything where the coefficient is less than one is going to give us is less than one and greater than zero is going to give us that nice diminishing marginal utility element that shows up in the real world in so many situations. So the fact that this piece is positive tells us that Miss Bates likes to talk. She prefers to talk faster at people rather than slower at people. And of course, that is multiplied by um, the number of visits that Emma makes to Miss Bates because of course if Emma doesn't make any visits, then Miss Bates does not get to enjoy listening to her self-talk. And the number of visits that Emma actually makes to Miss Bates actually depends on the speed of Miss Bates talking. If Miss Bates talks um, as fast as she can and Emma basically can't talk any herself during the visit, then um, we're going to see that Emma is actually less likely to visit her. Whereas if, if Miss Bates slows down her talking and makes it a two-way conversation, then Emma is more likely to visit. Now, one question here is, is Miss Bates aware of this particular relationship? Does she know that how fast she talks actually affects how often Emma wants to visit her. Um, in the book, there's indications that she may not actually know that this is a real relationship. This could be just um, the number of visits Emma makes, which Miss Bates perceives to be exogenous. But if, if Miss Bates were smart, she would actually realize that these two things have a relationship. Um, okay, so she cares about her talking and the number of visits she gets from Emma where she gets a chance to talk. So the second piece of Miss Bates' utility function is going to be the time duration of the picnic at Box Hill times the amount of talking that Miss Bates does per minute at Box Hill. And we know that Miss Bates likes talking, and the longer the picnic, the more she gets to enjoy herself talking. And of course, this points out the fact that these decisions are always looking forward when you're deciding um, how much to contribute, which happens before the picnic, and how much to talk generally, um, which happens before the picnic. So we do know that she doesn't end up talking as much as we thought during the picnic, but still her decision making happens before the picnic, and the objective function is always with respect to the point in time when the person actually makes the decision. Now the third component here is just P, and P is going to be 
the amount of money spent on the picnic, which can be interpreted as the quality of the picnic. And then the final component here is minus, so it's something she dislikes. Anytime we see negative, it's, a, it's something they dislike. Minus the amount of money she has to fork over for the picnic. And of course, that is a choice variable. She gets to decide how much she um, contributes to the picnic. And of course, the more she contributes, the more unhappy she is about this term. But the more she contributes, um, the more she enjoys the picnic, which is captured in this term. So that is Miss Bates' objective function. And we see that there are two constraints associated with her objective function. So let's try to interpret those constraints and decide if they're binding or non-binding. Um, the first constraint says that the amount of talking per minute that Miss Bates does has to be less than or equal to 250 words per minute. And this is simply um, a maximum on what is humanly possible in terms of how fast you talk. So this is simply an upper limit if she chooses to talk less than that. Then this constraint is non-binding and essentially won't come into play. But if she chooses to talk as fast as she wants to, um, she's going to go up to 125 or up to 250 words per minute. Now, this other constraint is actually going to be a binding constraint, meaning it has to be true no matter what. And this just says the quality of the picnic is equal to Miss Bates' contribution to the picnic plus Emma's contribution to the picnic. And of course, we, we kind of know that there's other people contributing to the picnic, but to keep things simple, I just made this a two-person model rather than a multi-person model. Now let's look at Emma's utility. Um, so first of all, what, what's our first term of Emma's utility function? What is she trying to maximize? Well, beta here is just going to be an importance weight, and that's multiplied by A, which is her altruism level. So altruism is really how much you care about other people's utility. In this case, this is Emma's altruism toward Miss Bates, since those are the only two people in this model, in this world. And Emma actually cares about Miss Bates' utility. So um, that's captured in her altruism. And so her altruism is a function of Miss Bates' utility. And of course, we already know Miss Bates' utility up here. And this is important because Emma can actually influence Miss Bates' utility by visiting her more often. One thing I forgot to do in this model is I forgot to make Miss Bates' utility a function of Emma's visits, and of course that's really important. So I'm just defining it here. Utility of Miss Bates, we know, depends crucially on Emma's visits. Okay, so how do these models connect with each other? Well, we know that um, when Miss Bates solves her problem to figure out the optimal speed to spend talking, um, her talking speed is going to be a function of Emma's visits. Um, and particularly this will be the case if Miss Bates is aware that her talking impacts Emma's vis visits. Now in the same way, Emma is going to solve her model. She'll take the first order condition, which is our way of solving the model to find the optimal number of visits and the optimal um, financial contribution to the picnic. And she'll come up with an optimal number of visits to make. And those optimal number of visits are going to depend on how fast Miss Bates is talking because that makes those visits more annoying. And it's also going to depend on how much utility Miss Bates gets from those visits. So if Miss Bates is really, really happy to see Emma every time, then Emma might actually like to visit Miss Bates more because Emma is altruistic and knows that those visits um, bring her more joy. And that's the general principle. It's the way these two models are connected. And we know that um, Emma's objective function here, her n optimal number of visits depends on T. And this V star T is actually going to be the same V star T we see up here, assuming that Miss Bates actually understands the relationship between um, Emma's visits and her talking, which is probably not the case, but if it were the case, this V star would be plugged in up here. So, so these two models are basically plugged into one another, and that happens sometimes when there's mutual externalities, and this is essentially a mutual externality model. All right. Um, so another interesting thing here is this coefficient beta. This is the coefficient on altruism. How important is altruism to Emma? And we know that for Mr. Knightley, this beta is the main thing he cares about. Mr. Knightley really wants Emma to be the kind of person who is altruistic 
and visits Miss poor visits poor Miss Bates um, because she's altruistic towards Miss Bates. So Mr. Knightley basically makes the case that Emma needs to increase her beta weight, her importance weight, on her altruism toward Miss Bates. And of course, the rest of the model is just about the financing of Box Hill. It's a pretty simple model. As a matter of fact, this model is a little bit too simple because there's no curvature related to the um, financing of the picnic. But here, we, we can just read the model to see what does Emma care about based on this model. Well, Emma also cares about P, the qu total quality of the picnic. Um, Emma dislikes, we see the negative sign indicates she dislikes her visits to Miss Bates times how how fast Miss Bates talks. This is no surprise here. It's not fun to be in the room with someone who's just talking at you rather than having a conversation with you. And the faster she talks, the harder it is to get a word, word in edgewise. So this is Emma's annoyance with Miss Bates. And then of course we have, um, we have the Box Hill time duration times Miss Bates talking. So how much does she dislike looking forward to Box Hill where Miss Bates is going to be talking. And of course she has disutility from her own financial contribution to the picnic. And we have the same financial constraint up here. This is basically a budget constraint. And I will say um, I assign this problem to my students sometimes and the students who haven't read Jane Austen's Emma usually think this is setting up a relationship between a college student and um, an older adult who likes to talk a lot. That's probably something they've experienced. So basically, Jane Austen's model that she built um, a couple hundred years ago is still applicable today.